a thing was um just like you're saying like this year is gonna be a nightmare you're gonna die and then like <laughs> three days before school started I got an email from like the head of the DOE like art education office being like you're gonna want to quit blah 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 and it just kind of yeah it really does feel like you're like inundated with like hang on for dear life because it's going to be a nightmare um and it <laughs> and it's true. No, it uh, has been very hard, but I think um, like right now I'm I'm in a, a better place than I was two months ago. And the month before that, I was also doing great. You know, like I think it's it's very up and down um, for me. September was actually pretty good. Like it was it was overwhelming and everything was new and I was getting my bearings. But like I had so much energy and it was really fun meeting my students and I had all of these ideas I had thought of over the summer that I was finally getting to like see happen in the real world and then like November kind of took it or October November like took a dip but I think that that um like knowing that yes there will be low points like don't sugarcoat it don't expect it to be a smooth year but also know it's not like it's not eight months straight of crying at your desk like you there will also be wonderful points um like throughout each day and then like maybe a great week or whatever um and I will I'll also say that like um having a grad school friend group chat or like something like that having people to contact outside of your school to be like I just got this email from my principal and I don't know any of the other teachers well enough yet to be like, what, what's he saying? What does this mean? Like, which I said to Jackie and she was like, oh, I don't think it's you. Like, I think he's communicating bad or whatever, but like having those outside um, associates to, <laughs> to talk to, I think is very helpful. Um, yeah, Jackie, I can kick it over to you. I can also talk about lesson planning stuff but we can go like back and forth a little yeah. um now that I'm past my first year I will say you know we had that remote year and we came back and that kind of felt like another first year for everyone it was like the students were like coming back to school after being away for almost two years and then every teacher felt like it was their first year again because we were relearning so many things and just getting re-acclimated so I think the first year is really, even though I had several years of teaching experience in just all different kinds of locations, like situations, um, ranging from uh, students paying for classes to working with students who were in um, like a temporary educational setting because they've been sus suspended from their schools. Like I had that range of experience, but uh, my first year, it's it was like learning everyone's names, learning how your school works. It's it's just doing everything for the first time. It's like when you take the train somewhere new, you're like gonna get lost because you're going there for the first time and just kind of expect that that's okay. And just like take time to like, just acclimate yourself and take time for reflection and just know that it is difficult. But just if you take time, I think to, reflect and find people to share your experience with it can be more um tolerable I guess that's the word yeah I think if if you are not currently a person who's comfortable um like asking more questions like asking so many questions that you think the person you're asking them to might start getting annoyed like if that's not if you're not currently good at that like start getting your yourself in the mindset of like it's okay to ask 5,000 questions because everyone else also knows that you're new um and like and they remember being new even if they've been working for a long time um mm -hmm. and you might not get all the information you need but like people are there to help but sometimes you have to bug them a little bit yeah lean on your school community like wherever you wherever you land uh, all the teachers have been through it. Many of them will have had experiences in different schools. And so um, I think really lean on your school community and your city college community and any of the communities, 
communities, your art communities, um, really just lean on people. And you know, your first year you'll have a mentor uh, assigned to you. And so just make sure you get that from your school. Um, and so that you have someone that checks in on you, someone to you know ask if you can visit other teachers' classrooms, see how they work with the students in that school to you know get tricks and tips and things that are already working. Just use things that are already working. You don't have to invent everything your first year. You don't have to do the best lesson plans your first year. Um, uh, I really like the saying, uh, done is better than perfect. Mm. You know, just get it done sometimes. And then, you know, next year you can redo it or you can try something new, mm. which I guess, yeah. you know, takes us into lesson planning, talking about lesson plans. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say my, my mentor and I, I don't know how mentors get picked. I, it seems like they kind of run the gamut from like extremely present and helpful to some other end of some spectrum, but mine was like, worry about, like, if you are going to worry about something, have it be like your connection, your relationship with the students. And just like Jackie's saying, like, it's okay if it's not the greatest, most well-designed, well-paced lesson in the world. Like just, I've been trying to tell myself, like, just do right by the people who are in the classroom so that I feel like if nothing else, they at least have like had a positive, adult interaction with somebody yeah. um yeah, positive adult interaction and then like positive art experience yeah sometimes yeah. you you know you want to hit all the points and you want them to think deeply and you want to make a connection to history and you want to make a connection to their personal life but sometimes you can't do everything I mean most of the time you can do everything um but like there's like no time for fun, anything yeah, they can have fun. And if they can have a, you know, you can have a positive experience with the student, even if like you just had like a bumping of heads, like if you can like turn it around and like give them the time of day for another, you know, in the next moment, those are th still things I'm reminding myself. Um, then they can leave the room feeling like, oh, okay, I'm going to come to class next time, kind mm. of tiny bit more interested in this in art than I did last week then mm. you it's a big win um Jackie will you because I see I have all of my classes five days a week mm -hmm. is that you have the same for your students no I have a different schedule every day okay because I, I think that makes a different like what you're saying like when they leave yeah. and come back the next time like uh, sometimes it's like relentless where you just see them over and over and then other times it's like you have a week to yeah, depending on what age group. Yeah, um, I do have a group of students I push into their ELA class um, four days of the week as well. I um, support their ELA teacher. Um, so I see those students almost every day. And it it can get really you know challenging when you're seeing the students every day. I know, um, Stephanie, you do. Um, to like take that step back and kind of approach them with like a fresh, like, you know, every day is a new day, every chance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important to like, remember that, you know, I work with middle schoolers. So there's so many feelings all the time. And it's really difficult for us as adults to not like, hold on to those feelings in the same way that, you know, preteens and teenagers do. Mm -hmm. So really trying to let go of things and just remind myself that these are children and I have to give them a chance every time, mm -hmm. even Don't if take they- anything personally. Yeah. Even if they did like said the worst, most disgusting thing to me <laughs> or about me, I have to let it go. And, <laughs> and it's not actually about me. <laughs> um, I think so we've swayed you... from like complaining, but- Sorry. Oh I yeah. <laughs> we've, we've departed from lesson planning, but um, I don't know. I think it's all, okay. it's all related. I was going to say really quick with the lesson plan piece, um, mm -hmm. yeah. the lesson plans that you are like contractually, like this, this was new information to me that you're contractually okay. Okay. obligated to write like by like what the union has 
made you sign on for. They are not like grad school lesson plans um, at all. Like if you, if you have like a learning objective, you have like the act like a rough outline of your activities um, and maybe like, this is how I've been formatting mine. Um, and then at the bottom, like some of the informal or whatever sort of assessments that I'm doing. Um, I was told that that is like more than okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think like within that kind of basic framework that like technically you are supposed to have that for every single day, yeah. you can be as, as freewheeling as you want. Um, yeah. I've heard, you know, from the union representative that you can have a lesson plan on a napkin. I mean, don't because we're better than that. Yeah. But um, any, you know, if you have a plan, it's written down, it's there, then you'll be protected by the union. Mm -hmm. So like, no, understand like those rights that you have um, as being part of the union, but then also your school will, each school has their own sort of, um, not requirements, but maybe agreements that your, the staff may have come together to create like sort of norms across, you know, my, my school has this, we have what every lesson plan should have. We have the way that we phrase our um, objective for our students in, in student friendly language. And the first like task of the day, um, has a specific um, title to it. But um, so like, I think each school has their own requirements. So I think that's a great question you could ask if you're going on an interview, um, mm -hmm. so you know what each school sort of their standards are. Um, and then for me, I just really try to keep lesson plans simple. I've learned it's taken me five years and I'm still trying to figure out how to keep things really simple. I always want to do so many things, um, but I have found that one task, one sort of feat uh, is what is accomplishable for my students in a 45 minute period, um, like one thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. One yeah, one thing that maybe has like three steps to it, but one thing. Yeah, and I, I, I think one benefit to that, like I must have some version of a daily lesson plan, a benefit is that it does help you to have a main idea each day. And then it's a lot easier when you have your class of 30 students and they're all at their different paces and different engagement levels to figure out like what is actually important to me that this student gets out of the day. And it just kind of, I think it sets you up for like a more flexible and responsive relationship with students. If you kind of know, like, this is my, this is my one thing. And if you leave here with this one thing, then I'll feel good about the experience you had in class. Yeah. I think that like, if you start from the end, like, what do you want that student to leave with that day? Mm it will be, it's easier to plan like, oh, we'll just do this. Mm -hmm. Get there, I'll ask them this one question. And um, so I'll give you an example to get more specific instead of talking vaguely. Um, uh, I think a really good example I learned actually in my student teaching experience, I was at an elementary school and we were doing tempera painting. And I still do this with my middle school students. We did um, secondary colors on different days. And so one day we would do, it would be a green day, one day would be an orange day, one day would be a purple day. And like that day, the goal was for them to practice making green. We would mix different amounts of yellow and different blues, maybe throw in a teal, you know, if you get, if everyone gets, they need something else, you know, have a little bit more to add, but you have that one thing. I want you guys to know how to make green and understand how green is made. And that's, that's it. No layer, no extra stuff. Like this is all what you're all we're doing. And just keep it super simple. Because mm -hmm. um, I think it took me a while to realize my students have like eight classes a day. This is just one stop. It's like a lot. You know, mm -hmm. they have stuff going on at home, getting to school, transportation. The world is a lot. So one thing. <laughs> yeah. 
and it's easier on you for real yeah um and then and I know you mentioned creative control and I think as art teachers I don't know about you Stephanie but I think we have a lot of creative control like, like almost too much sometimes <laughs> yeah like I think in the beginning I was like I can do anything oh my gosh mm -hmm. I want to do it all mm -hmm. like yeah so I think as art teachers generally we have just we can pretty much do anything so mm -hmm. you just you really have to narrow it down for yourself and like what do you want to do what do you really want Mm -hmm. Does the school like that you're working in, like, so when you start off as a teacher and right, you, you get hired at a school, right? And mm -hmm. like, because I've heard or been told, like, certain schools they have a curriculum set for you and you have to follow that. And then other schools, like, you get to create your own curriculum and you have that type of like creative control. And so that's what I'm like worried about, where it's like following such a rigid, you know, structure of doing things that the school wants you to do but then it's like you have these other ideas that you feel like maybe a little bit better or for your students once you get to know them and things like that that's something I worry about and because obviously I feel like for those that are from my experience like in field work working with other art teachers in schools um that's something that they have told me with their experiences as well where it's like you know, that was very important for them to have is that creative control where, you know, they were butt heads with um, certain like principals in a school that aren't really um, art savvy, I guess, and they don't really understand like the, you know, creativity side and art side and the art world and things like that. But they're very quick to shut things down from like art teachers, their ideas and things like that they want to bring into the classroom or curriculum. And so like, have you guys faced that or how do you overcome that? Or I, I, I don't know, like, I just find that um, troubling as an art educator. Thanks, Stephanie. I, we see you. Um, yeah, so I like, I imagine that's just yet another thing that varies by the school. That would be um, a good interview question. Um, like I, I was given, like, not only was I not given a curriculum, I wasn't even given, like, this is generally the kind of experience we want arts, like, their art is in the name of my school, and I am the first full-time art teacher that they've had, um, and there's just no, yeah, there's, there's nothing, which is, like, at times super fun, because I get to be like, well, I feel like doing paper mache, and at times it's like, you know what, sometimes as you as an artist know like sometimes some limitations can also be really nice for creativity um and so I think that when like in in the absence of any sort of guidelines or expectations um it can be easy to depending on who you are if you're me to like spin out and try to do everything um but I also think like I've done projects this year that have been way more like contained and straightforward than I had taught as like a teaching artist or than I think of when I think of like what I want art education to be like I just did like a color theory project and it was very like kind of like the high school version of what Jackie was describing like we are mixing these colors and we're putting them here and I think that a lot of my students really appreciated that because we had just come off of this very wide open like what kind of world do you envision let's sculpt it you know like and so I think that um, uh, just remembering that like, even if you do get to do whatever you want, it's still like, there are 30 of them and there's one of you. So it's still ultimately like figuring out what's gonna work for your, your coworkers who are children. Yeah, and what they want and kind of, meeting them of course like you know we always talk about meeting them where they are and and I think that's true for the school community too it's like mm. meeting the school community where they are at with art like you know the first year you go in my first year there was an art teacher before I got there and so all the students came in with their experience from that art teacher whether it was positive or negative and they would say you know Mr. So-and-so we did it this way and we did it that way and like um, I had to meet them like, okay, but this is how we're doing this now. And I know how, like, you can try it that way, but then maybe try it this way as well. 
um, give me a chance too, and I'll give you a chance. Um, and I think like, so for me, my first year was very open. And then we just, the school community decided to, to have Black Lives Matter at Schools Week in February of that year. And so my, whatever I wanted to do, I shifted it to that and we made t-shirts and we designed posters and that sort of thing. And so, so those sort of um, events have come up for me and my school community. And we decided to have a Hispanic Latinx uh, celebration in October. And so now the beginning of the year, I have to, I have to, but I figure out a way to tie that into whatever we do in the start of the year. And so, and I think that kind of, sometimes it can give you a good direction as long as you can find a way to make it work, you know, and not let it be too limiting and just figure out sometimes it's kind of like an assignment that you get um so and then you know now I'm directing the Broadway junior musical every year and so now I have to figure out a way to incorporate that I haven't yet last year I didn't and I'm trying to this year figure out maybe there can be some set design activities in the classroom um but ultimately these kinds of limitations the students get excited by because it's something that we're all doing together and it's a it's it's just like a community building activity and has more meaning and so if you can tie that kind of assignment into some kind some something that makes sense for you as the teacher then i think then you can be happier and more successful um, Paula, do you want to jump in? Yes, I would love to. Hi. Hi. Good to see so, you. Good to see all of you. Um, so I am a first year teacher. I graduated in 2020. I barely had any student teaching because of the pandemic. We, I had like one month or three weeks of like in-person student teaching. And then I, I did, um, the online, which was not good at all, it was a joke. Um, I don't come from education background. I I studied film. I was working in filmmaking. I don't have a studio arts background. I did this master's. I learned a lot of a lot of really interesting stuff. But honestly, I came out, graduated. I I don't know how to make I, I lesson plans. I don't know how to make them. I don't know how to make a curriculum. I don't know how to do a student management. Uh, it's been a nightmare, to be honest. Um, if you're hearing me in, in the program, in the department, the heads, whoever, please fix this. <laughs> you know, um, I don't even know where to, where to start. <laughs> I started working in the DOE last year, 2021. I worked two months and then I quit because I it was a nightmare. And then I came, I, I, then I, then I was like, you know what, I'm going to be a teacher assistant. Um, uh, so I can learn something, um, because I never learned how to be a teacher in a classroom. I, I actually was a, a uh, educator at a museum for three years, a film at museum. Like I know a lot of stuff. I just don't know how to manage students in a school. So, um, so I quit after two months. That was very traumatic for me because I left a lot of great kids, but stuff happened in that school. I didn't want to work with that administration. It was just, I had to take care of my personal and emotional safety. So I was like, well, I don't know if I'll ever be able to go back to the DOE, but I can't not do that right now. So I found a job through a friend in the program, which was great. Another uh, friend of mine who graduated from this program. And she was working at a charter school as a teacher, and I became her assistant art teacher. And that was that year I learned a lot, except that she left after like three months. Um, she had some personal situation she had to leave. So again, I was like, oh my God, I'm not like assisting an art teacher. <laughs> so somebody else came in. They actually asked me if I wanted to apply for the job, but I was like, no, I, I don't want to take extra responsibility if I'm not ready. I, I really... Like there are no shortcuts for learning this experience. There are no shortcuts, really. You just have to do it. However, it's going to happen. 
Um, so, uh, so I finished the year. I I had another sub. I I assisted another teacher, which he was uh, really good at managing. So I learned a little bit about from him, but um, he wasn't an art teacher. So, uh, um, and then in the end, at, at the end of the year, I decided to to apply in the DOE again. So I got a job in the DOE. Now I'm in a school in the DOE, and. <laughs> You know, I feel like I'm having a really hard year. It's not as bad as the first time that I was there. It's many ways is much better. The, the, I like the administration. There's a really strong community. Um, many of the, you know, the families, kids uh, are, uh, it's a small, good community. Um, but, I'm, you know, I, it's a, yeah, it's like, I, I'm still like, <gasps> I'm trying to survive, you know, I, lesson planning for me, I, I cannot do that in, in an hour, you know, like it, it takes research. I, I'm just like making it up. I don't know where to look for information or if, if I find information, it takes too long. So, so like you're in school all day, you get home, you're tired, you want to rest the weekend, you want to rest. You can't even like walk, you can't get up. I have 12 classes I have like 200 students so it's like you know what I I'm not gonna spend my extra time researching so I I bought a series of books I bought I bought like this collection of Davis books which are really very well researched um and I'm gonna take I'm gonna do my lessons based on those in that information like I'm gonna take those ideas because I looked at the books I did my research I talked to the publishers blah 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 and I was like, and I talked to my uh, principal and he was like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm really lucky that my principal wants to help his students, wants to help. Uh, and I'm like, you know, if I don't do this, what am I going to do? Uh, like buy lesson plans from teacher pay teachers, which kind of suck. Like, or am I going to spend all weekend writing lesson plans? Um, no, <laughs> uh, I have a life. Um, so that's what I'm, that's what's going to happen. Um, there are many people I need to thank. I need to thank my mentor. I'm really lucky that I got a good mentor, except that she's not an art teacher. So she's good at teaching me other things, but um, I still haven't like a, a, I haven't really worked with an art teacher ever. I mean, I have but like many interruptions. Um, I don't want to make this like all about me. I want to, I know everybody, you know, I want to hear other stories, but I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my experience. So you can help me because I, I still need help. Um, Jackie was saying some good stuff about making the lesson plans very quick and short. That's great. I didn't know that, you know, I, I'm a perfectionist. I want to do like a mega lesson, you know, there's no, um, no such thing as per perfect because every time I do something, um, like even if I teach, yeah, art of ed is really great. Mm -hmm. I go to them for, they have great classroom management, um, tricks. Um, but yeah, there's no, there's no perfect, you know, I teach my 11 classes and, I generally do the same lesson plan for mm -hmm. each class, but I, I change things as I go along. And, you know, the first time, the first class that gets that lesson, it sometimes is a hot mess. And I'm like, this did not work. I need to throw it away. We need to do something totally different. Never mind, we're not doing printmaking this year, but like, however I set it up, it's just not working. Let's just, let me just go to something else, you know? Um, I, I want to. I have just two more things I wanted to add before I, um, I, out of all the classes, I have maybe like five that are great. They're all, that's great. I love, I've, I don't have love everything. Perfect. I, have um, I get <laughs> along so well with these kids. They are mostly of the, the bilingual classes. Um, and that's great. Um, I, I just got an observation last week from my um, assistant principal, and she gave me she was she she gave me a lot of great feedback. So I'm I'm doing something right. So finally, it's like okay. happening. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause you there. <laughs>
just say like really take time to like take time like you're you have you know time for yourself when you do have time for yourself take time to reflect on like what is going well like you have mm-hmm. you have five classes that's, that are going well that's amazing that's like mm-hmm. that I have one that like goes well most of the, mm-hmm. some of the time but not mm-hmm. every, like that's one class out of my 11 okay the other ones they're like generally a hot mess most of the time um but like if you have five, that's really great. So really lean in on the things that are going well. Like figure out like what are the little things that you did that day that went well. So I'm gonna tell you, and I want to share it for it might be helpful for other people. Um it this I have to thank the I got a I have another mentor who is an art teacher. Um I apparently I signed up um during orientation. Um, in a DOE mentor program for new art teachers. So it's by, it's by Zoom. So I meet her once a month uh, with uh, three other art teachers and the mentor. Um, and then in just one se- session, she told us, she asked us, what do you think is more important? Is it management or lesson planning and curriculum? And we were all like, lesson planning, lesson planning. And then she's like, no, <laughs> you first, if you don't have the right procedures and routines in place, an organization in your classroom, no lesson plan is going gonna, is gonna to work. Doesn't matter what lesson plan it is. So after that was in December. So this year I, I changed many things. I did many things that I should have done on the first week of class, which I didn't know because nobody ever taught me that I had to do that. So I did all these things about and 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 because students like repetition and routines and they expect it. And when they don't have not all students, but many students, um, when they don't have that, they go a little they go a little crazy, you know, like they they get restless and bored and they can you know, that's not good. Um, That's the and this brings me to another point which is I feel like all teachers who are going to work in the DOE should have a minor or a double specialization in special education because I'm in this school and most of my students have IEPs and I don't have a special education teacher co-teaching with me. And I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like supposed to be an expert in differentiation when I've never even heard that word. And I don't know. That's just my opinion. I don't feel like our master's program prepared us or warned us of how bad it was going to be because and how how the schools expect you to know all this stuff now i have to like find um a professional development things that's another i need help because i need if you guys know any of any professional developments about special education i need to do that because it, it, it can get you in trouble if you don't know this stuff they expect you to know it, the, the administration. Um, so I, I think that the special ed, or yeah, I think that that's a great point to bring up. Um, I I don't think this was new information, but like it hadn't set in. I don't know. I learned that like students who have support in other classes don't get that support in art class. So like I have Mm-mm. students who don't have much English at all, who have a bilingual para in most of their other classes, but not art. So I think definitely yeah, often it, have paras take breaks and they'll mm-hmm. do that during an elective, like an art yeah. class or gym yeah. class. Um, and so I think uh, that's pretty much that's like the norm across the board. Like our teachers, we don't have a second teacher, and you yeah. know, gym teachers don't have a second teacher for students. You know, ICT classes. That's that's sort of the norm. Um, and so in terms of differentiation, um, like when I was saying earlier that the lesson plans I right now are not like the lesson plans I wrote in grad school, mm-hmm. um, I would have like a paragraph on differentiation in each lesson plan. And then now that it's in practice and like, I don't have a full week to do this homework assignment of writing one lesson plan. Like actually I need this many every single day. And as you say, it's not not a day that's necessarily giving you a lot of like leisure time or like good thinking time. Um, I think 
I mean, yeah, I think it's just, it's part of like the more experience you get, the more you kind of, as you're figuring out your plan for the day, you start to see the spots where someone might get a little bit lost or someone might fall off and you start to figure out just like simple things. Like if you are going to ask a question out loud, have it written down somewhere. Like if you have a slideshow, make sure that that question is in the slideshow. And then that catches your students with auditory processing that catches some of your ELLs that can like process while they read a little bit better than how they listen. But so I think that, I think that it's like an accumulative process. Um, and I don't think that, I think, so early on in the year, I also felt like, why does my school think that I like have a handle on this? Like, why aren't they giving me this information? Um, and I, um, I kind of think that it's not that they thought that I knew, it's that they expect this year to be a learning curve. And they, they don't think that you're going to start off knowing everything. They expect you There's to no just figure it out as you go little by little, which is really hard. Like that, I am a perfectionist. It's a weird environment because you are alone with 30 students in the room. Like it's, it's not like I'm saying it to imply that it's easy, but I think that the like slow acceptance of this, I am going to be learning all year and it's not all gonna come at once. And that might mean that my first two months are really challenging. I think that a lot of the first year is just like getting to like a, a personal place, at least some of the time where you can try to feel comfortable with that or like accepting of that. I don't know. How has that changed for you in the past few years, Jackie? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm learning things every day and, you know, we do have the professional learning, professional development, you know, as teachers, we, it's required of us to do professional development. And I think that implies in itself that we are learning, you know, we, we are, it's part of the job is to figure these things out. And because things are always changing as well, like, and learning how, you know, they're, yes, the DOE, um, does offer special education courses and the uh, UFT also offers courses for special education, ELLs, you know, differentiation, lesson planning, classroom management. There are courses, you know, that teachers can take and you get your um, professional learning credits for it. Um, and so it's important to keep doing professional development. And after, after you get tenure, it is required that you accumulate hours and you have to document them yourself. So it is required that we keep learning because we have to, it's, there's no way like you can just come in knowing everything. There's just no way. Um, yes. UFT also, also offers counseling and advising. Um, I don't, I think it's called MAP program. Um, so, you know, talk to the union about getting some of the counseling and advising from mentors. Um, so you can get another voice, but it does sound like Paula, you do know a lot because like I heard you giving a lot of advice. Um, so I think you have, should trust yourself in what you do know, because you know a lot and nobody yeah. thing coming in, nobody you. knows you know, how to manage classroom because every classroom is different. There's no right. Mm -hmm. uh, and no one knows how to lesson plan for your school specifically, every mm -hmm. school. Is so there's no way yeah. that like, go through I know Stephanie you went to another grad program after City College so maybe oh yeah a little bit about like you know, what that program offered and um but I think just like there's no program that can prepare you specifically for the school that you land at and how to lesson plan and how to um manage your classroom at that school and how to build relationships with your students at that school because that's just something that you learn you know in situ yeah learn it in response to your, your students. And I will offer, you know, one suggestion for, for lesson planning. And that for me, um, lesson planning for me really starts with art making. I make the artwork that I feel like doing that I get and um, like I get excited by, like I want to, you know, we're designing t-shirts right now and doing t-shirt designs. And so I go through the process. I write the things down that this, I'm going to have the students write down. I respond to the questions that I'm going to have the students respond to. And then see, and I'm going to see if like, is this fun for me? Is this a 
like a chore, then maybe I need to switch it. And that'll um, also going like, yeah, can I go through the steps? Is this possible for me to do in like 10, 15 minutes so mm -hmm. that my students can maybe do it in like 25, 35 minutes? Yeah. And I think that that also like that gives you a good hint for like, oh, if I have a student who can't keep track of steps on their own, like it just it helps you pinpoint those little like crux moments of an activity yeah. or a project so that you can plan for those. Like, I think that that's how you start. I don't know. I I don't know what I'm doing with all of my students half the time, let alone ones that have like a lot of really specific challenges and needs, um, but yeah. Um, I will say that I think that um, special ed teachers tend to be like very chill and warm and approachable. So- They are, yes. If, if there are <laughs> like trying, trying to have like an amazing year for every single student, I think is um, a goal that is not going to make you feel good about yourself, but maybe it's like choosing a handful of students um, that you really want to figure out, like, what can I do to get this kid engaged? And it might be a matter of like starting mm -hmm. that small. Yeah. And like, if there's a class that you're having difficulty, like if I have a class that I'm having a lot of struggles with, I go to the other teachers that they see. I'm like, what is it? Like, I'm having this issue with the class and they're like, oh my God, me too. Okay this is what I tried and this is what I tried. I'm like, I tried this and this and we're like, none of this is working. Why don't we try this and this, you know? Like it's an ongoing process. Like no, none of us have it figured out all the time. I go to the teacher that has like 23 years and she's like, this class, we tried this, this, this. I think maybe and like, she's like, what do you think we should do? And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. you know, we go to this other teacher and ask them for help and see what uh, they have to say. If you, yeah, so just like you say that you have these five decent classes, like if there's a class or two that like is just bumming you out every single day, maybe that's a class that you ask either your mentor or just someone that you're comfortable with to come and observe you. Um, not not an AP, but like, I mean, as far as I understand, that's what your mentor is there for, like to come and like, they'll be able to see the things that you can't see because you're just too in it. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been, Thanks to my mentor and to the assistant principal, I've been working on this. Like we're like trying to figure out like, well, what can we do? Can we do so it can, it can improve? Um, and I'm going to be, I, my mentor scheduled uh, observations, intervisitations with the teachers of these like more difficult, challenging groups. Um, and uh, I, yeah. And then, so and that's what, that's my plan. Every prep that I have, I'm going to go check out other teachers and that's to see great. how they work with the students. Um, and that was another advice from my AP um, that when she was a teacher, that she spent every prep in other classes or or she would sit down with them at lunch or go to their gym class and try to re build relationship with the students. The thing with me is that I only see my students once a week for 40 minutes. So I don't, I, I don't, we haven't had a good time to build relationship. You know, like most teachers, they see them like are at least three hours or two and a half hours a day. Um, yeah, same. I mean, very I think different. a lot of our teachers, a lot of our teachers have that experience. You see them once a week. I see my students once a week. Um, so what, so what are you supposed to do? To, to, it takes time to build that relationship. To, so to, to, to be in to class. Them. Like how, cause I feel like they don't take art seriously because it's, it does not, doesn't have a lot of weight, you know, like, cause it's just like yeah. a, the well, joke it's class. Your first year. It's, it's your first the year. Hangout class. <laughs> my first year was similar, you know, like it's, the students are testing you remember like they're testing you that's their job that's like you know so, as young people, so what do I do if for example today they were just talking 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 I couldn't even get a word to explain the lesson so do I just stop and just don't teach like I can't like I don't like screaming as I don't think that's effective I, I just don't know some days, I, some days I just don't know. Some days I'm just like, I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to let them talk and do whatever they want. Because it's like, what do I do? I I wonder if maybe kind of, I want to make sure that we get to Gail's question before yeah. we go. We only have a few minutes left. Um, but I am wondering if a couple of things. One, like, see if you can switch the framing of like, it's not that you're giving up. It's that you are 
seeing where your students are at that day and you're giving them what they need, which some days is not going to be a structured lesson. And then I think the other side of that um, is mm -hmm. like having some, I feel like this would be a great, something that Art of Ed might be great for, but like having some just like really low key, low instructions activities in your back pocket. So like what's what's a tray of materials you can put out on the table where you don't need to tell them how to do it, but they're still okay. engaging in something all okay. class. And like, yeah, that's what I you think... do on those days. Um, yeah, I just want them to feel successful. And yeah. all of us like I just yeah, and you want to leave school not feeling like beaten down which is also important um really Thank quick you. Gail Gail asked about the job interview process um Jackie I think you applied for lots of jobs right I did. yeah I think we both did that transition from museum freelance like four jobs before so many having jobs just one job so many jobs at one time like too many yeah, yeah. I, I'm That's in the awesome. middle of so many jobs uh so it'll feel nice because you get to like put your bag down in the same place every yeah. day. Go to one place. And I think that, yeah, that's like really refreshing part of it. And then um, I, I don't know, I, I, I really welcomed the change of going to one place. And, but then, you know, after a couple of years, I, you know, am taking on like, oh, again, I have four jobs <laughs> at the same time. I'm doing, yes. I'm doing eight jobs at once. Um, so like you'll have that ability, those like um, skills of like having lots of tentacles in different places. Um, so yeah, think, yeah. But it does like there, there are lots of different like chunks of the day. So like depending on how your, your prep falls, like it's not like you're just doing the same thing for how, however long school is for that many hours straight, like six hours and 50 minutes, six hours and 50 <laughs> minutes. Are contracted. Um, but so like my schedule, like I, I teach three classes and then I have prep where sometimes I'm lesson planning and sometimes I'm trying and failing to organize the art room. And sometimes I'm meeting with my mentor. So it's like the day still has like, even though you are in the same place and the one job, I think that it's a job with a lot of variety. Yeah. Um, one thing about the interview process that was yeah. really freaking me out last spring and summer was so like Jackie mentioned, I went to a different grad program because I needed to get my official certification after getting my master's at City College. Um, and they really stressed this idea of like, make a make a teaching portfolio, like make yourself an entire website, which I imagine it would be a little bit easier for you than me because you have that background, but it's still like a big task. And then this like former student came to talk to one of my classes. He said that he hand addressed 100 applications to 100 schools. And I just like turned my Zoom off and cried because I had six jobs at the time. And I was like, I can't also apply to 100 schools. Um, so I did not end up making a teaching portfolio. I made like like a six slide PowerPoint that had like, elementary projects, middle school, high school. That was it. Um, I think only one school of like four actually even asked to see it. Um, I, yeah, I ended up going on like a handful of first round interviews um, or like way more first round interviews, which were like 10 minutes long on Zoom. They were insane. They were like no job interview I've ever had because the principal is so rushed and they're just like, who are you? What's your deal? Um, and then a handful of demo lessons. Um, and then like a school offered me a position. And then I like called a school I had demo taught at a month previous and was like, I got a job offer, but would like to work here. And they, they made it happen. Um, but yeah, the main, that was a run on answer, but I think the main thing was like, I don't think it needs to be a job in itself. Um, there are a lot of steps because you need to get your stuff set on Teach NYC. And then there's the city. So that's for the state. And then there's the city website that like you also submit an application for and that like puts you in the pool and then you apply individually for school. So there are steps, but I don't think it needs to be insane. Um, okay, I, I know that <laughs> during this student teaching process, which I'm doing this upcoming semester, I'm going to learn about the teach system and how that works. 
Um, so I, I know those details are coming to me, but I don't know about it yet. So mm. like when you got in there, got your stuff all set up, did people come to you or you were applying to them through? This, um, like, I, I'm glad you asked. I kind of forgot that, yeah, I would have sometimes schools reach out. A lot of them were in the Bronx. I think that it's a little bit harder to get people in the Bronx or just fewer people are applying for jobs in the Bronx. Um, but yeah, so I would have principals reach out to me. Um, but I think that all the schools that I actually demo lesson taught at were ones that I had applied to. Um, I had like a one page, like this is my teaching philosophy thing, which I think had been an assignment at some point that I like I had and then I edited and then I had um, a cover letter and I would like, like if, if you've applied to other jobs, it's like I had my my basic cover letter and then the first and last paragraph, I would do a little like, and and this part about your school just reminds me why I'm a teacher. <laughs> Much more sincere than that, I swear. I'm course, just doing it now because I'm like three whole months into this job. Um, I remember there <laughs> were like the borough offices would send out um, yes different like charts of like, here's a list of the schools that are hiring and their um, principal's emails, you know? So the borough office, each borough has an arts office and they'll um, reach out to you once you get into that teach system. Um, okay. But like now for like the city college emails, like I saw one recently about how, you know, the teach system is opening and there's an, someone to email Trenton, I think his name is like, shoot him an email if you can, or like, you know, never hurts to reach out to like, the borough arts offices yeah. find out. I am um, one thing that I did at the school where I'm currently working, where like the sadly no longer the principal, but the principal that emailed me was just like the the best. And I immediately was like, I have to work here. Um I did instead of I sent my like email thank you, but then I also like wrote them a card and mailed it to them and felt so deeply embarrassed, but I think it made an impression on someone. Um, that was uh, advice from, from someone that works in a different field. But I think that like, when you do find a school that feels like a really good match, um, embarrassing yourself a little is always a nice touch. All right. And reading, reading the chat. Great, yeah, thank so you, I appreciate it. Resources that were shared. So I'm actually gonna compile all of the resources that have come up in the chat and I'll send them out in an email so that we all have them. This has been such a great conversation. I know that we could go on for a lot longer talking about this, um, but there will be more coffee and conversations that we have. We have like, I think three more scheduled. So you'll see those in your email. Um, and I just wanna thank Jackie and Stephanie again for um, having this conversation. I think it was really rich. Thanks. Uh, all right. What I'm is your name? Yes, you might have missed, missed me. I'm Ife, so I am working as a program assistant um, for the art ed department. I'm also an oh. art educator. I've been in education for 18 years, including classroom nice to meet you. Hi. and nonprofits. Hi, great to meet you. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, you all. Me. Thank you so much for listening oh, to me. Yeah. I do love teaching, okay. though. I love okay. art. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm just... Uh, it's a lot. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, everyone. Thank you for all the helpful information and resources. Have a lovely evening, everyone. You too. Thanks. See ya. Bye.